Neurofibromatosis affects approximately one in 3,000 individuals and can have a variety of symptoms that can present over an entire lifetime. It's still a condition without a cure. My name is Dr. Andre Panosian, and I'm a board-certified plastic surgeon and neurofibromatosis specialist. Over the last 20 years, I've developed a focus and a philosophy in the surgical treatment of patients living with this condition. Today, I want to talk to you about surgery as it relates to neurofibromatosis and review what you need to get prepared and to know what to expect. But before we begin, it's important to briefly discuss what is neurofibromatosis and why does it occur? For most people living with this condition, type 1 neurofibromatosis, or NF1 for short, is the most common diagnosis. It occurs roughly in about one in 3,000 individuals worldwide, so it is not as uncommon as it might seem, and in fact, you may know someone living with this condition. NF1 occurs because of a faulty gene located on chromosome 17. Now, this is a gene responsible for producing a protein called neurofibroma, and it's a component in the supportive cells of nerves, such as Schwann cells, or something called oligodendrocytes. Without getting too far into the weeds, NF1 doesn't necessarily affect the nerves themselves, but the supportive cells that allow those nerves to conduct electricity or signals effectively to their targets. About half of patients with neurofibromatosis have no other family member with the condition. The other half usually has a parent with the condition that has passed on the gene to his or her child in what we call an autosomal dominant fashion. This means that any child a person with neurofibromatosis can inherit the condition. However, this doesn't mean that the severity of the condition is the same in everyone. Also, if the condition is generally mild in childhood, it doesn't mean that it might not become more severe with time. The reverse also holds true. There are many manifestations of NF1. The condition can affect many organ systems and tissues, including bones, nerves, the spine, eyes, and even the brain. But the most recognizable and perhaps the most emotionally stressful effect is on the skin. In NF1, and that's not to be confused with NF2, the peripheral nervous system is the site of the majority of tumors forming. That means virtually any nerve in the body is capable of producing neurofibromas from the top of the head down to the feet. In addition, neurofibromatosis can manifest differently in childhood as opposed to adulthood. Although children can develop tumors, they tend to be isolated and sometimes large. Sometimes the condition is so mild in childhood that the only hint of the diagnosis are those harmless little cafe au lait lesions that can be present on the skin. These are flat, lightly colored birthmarks that pose no real harm to the child. But as children get older, the tumors of NF1 can begin to manifest differently. Smaller skin tumors may start to form in the late teens and continue to enlarge over the next several decades. And in some cases, these tumors can cause things like itching and pain, occasional tingling, and even excessive sensitivity. For many people with NF, the difficulty in concealing these tumors as they grow in both size and number with age can create a lot of personal and social discomfort. The surgical strategies are going to be different for children and adults. In kids, surgery is directed at removing usually a single tumor that is creating some element of disfigurement or demonstrating some rapid rate of growth. The focus is to reduce the size of the tumor while preserving normal anatomy. Again, we want to reduce the size of the tumor, not necessarily remove every last little bit of it. The vast majority of these tumors are benign and therefore not cancerous. So there's no reason to be aggressive with this approach. Aggressive removal can sometimes unnecessarily cause debilitating things such as paralysis or excessive bleeding and even wound healing issues. Now for adults, surgery can be directed towards the larger neurofibroma tumors that occur just as in kids, but frequently adults develop hundreds of smaller tumors on the skin involving virtually every surface of the body. Of course, there are differences in severity that are not only age-related, but genetically predetermined. This means that older adults may have more tumors and larger tumors than younger adults. Many patients wonder, when's the best time to treat these tumors? Now to answer this question, it's kind of important to know how patients with NF move through the medical system. Oftentimes, when a child is born, parents are referred by their pediatricians to the nearest children's hospital and get funneled to the neurology department. The predominant advice given by pediatricians is that tumors are benign. Therefore, if they're not causing a problem, they don't touch them. Now, unfortunately, adult neurologists often provide this same advice. 
What is not discussed is what happens to these tumors if they're allowed to grow. As a surgeon who treats neurofibromatosis, I see patients of all ages with this condition and have seen what happens over the course of a patient's lifetime, especially when their tumors are not removed early or addressed at a younger age. In neurofibromatosis, it's rare for a tumor to pre-exist in a very large size. Usually tumors start small and then they grow. It's also much easier to remove a tumor when it is small than when it's allowed to grow. So if the majority of tumors will eventually grow at some point in a person's lifetime, then it kind of makes sense to remove these tumors as early as possible or when they are first noticed. The controversy is that there's no real way to predict the rate of growth of any particular tumor, which may go sometimes years in a stable size. So what's the right answer? I think that patients need information to make these decisions for themselves. I always say that there's no wrong answer when it comes to the decision to undergo surgery to remove NF tumors. But from a surgeon's perspective, the success in removing tumors is going to be much higher and the risks much lower and even the recovery much better when the tumors are in a smaller size. In addition, future symptoms of pain, discomfort, disfigurement can be minimized so that patients with neurofibromatosis go on to have a long and happy life. Thank you for sticking it out with me. If you like this content and would like to see more of this in the future, don't forget to subscribe and follow.